Hey y'all, this is Deb Chanel's 48 Swirl and I'm Deb Chanel. And child, I was halfway through this video that I am giving y'all on Merit to Medicine Reunion Part 3, Season 7, Episode 18. Child, I was talking, talking, talking almost halfway through. I was so proud of myself. And child, I hadn't even pushed the recording button. Now, how sad is that? So forgive me i started working on this video at 12 i think it was 12 12 uh in the wee hours of the morning uh of uh january 6th knowing i need to be my behind in the bed so we really gonna go a little quick fast and hurry because all of it was just a really big recap on things uh when nothing happened we saw the first two uh parts of the reunion last week and those were the best parts uh nothing like i said really really happened some fences were mended some hearts were amended um uh, and it, it just is what it is so let's quickly go through this and hopefully i'll be done by 1 a.m okay we go into um dr simone and dr heavenly they are pretty much making up from breaking up from the last episode that was being shown. They're on an even keel now. Uh, they've forgiven each other. They're going to work through their issues and they're going to leave the men out of their discussions. Okay. Because that's pretty much what Dr. Heavenly and Dr. Simone were really fighting about anyway. And, and spreading business on what the men do behind the scenes. And y'all don't know why Dr. Heavenly make all these like she got a smell to see of her breakfast fresh type of look i don't know why she gotta make them ugly faces she's a beautiful woman i just don't understand she always does it she always toots up her nose y'all get in those comments and tell me what y'all feel about that but then we move on we got jackie uh and is asking about how the house is going you know it's renovations going real well and jackie has to tell them no the contractors are off off their schedule their roof wasn't even on prior to this taping they had to postpone they saw for france trip which i don't understand why uh because they could have got a hotel well right now they're thinking about going to a hotel because they're saying they've been in the basement kind of living things out but it just is what it is on that whole situation i'm not really understanding it myself but like i said 10 days they were supposed to have been having a, a ball of time in their life in south of france just because the contractors are getting behind they could not go I'm like, Jackie, couldn't you have anybody come and stay at your house and watch and make sure they are getting things rolling so they don't be wasting all this other time where they can bill you out for? I mean, really, what's going on? I don't understand why you have to break all your plans or delay them because of your house renovating. But, hey, it just is what it is. Maybe it's more to the story that you want to lend and let us have some understanding on. But leaving that situation, and ask Cora, how does she feel about Dr. Gregory? talking with Simone and Cecil about how much he really do care for her this that and the third and the relationship that they still have with Dr. Gregory even though she's not a part of it you know she stumbles and says you know she glads her husband slash ex-husband is still having fond memories of her she will always keep them and her thoughts as well because everything wasn't bad when it came to their relationship but she wished him well she's gonna do fine without him he's gonna do fine without her and they're just gonna go you know go from there then we got um uh, andy or getting some uh what do you call it write-ins of common uh commentary people or not commentary people but viewers of the show wrote in commentary to ask you know certain guests on the panel of the show different questions or whatnot somebody wrote in about why mariah always fussing with quarter would they ever have a resolution with their relationship of course we already know they're gonna have that love hate relationship towards each other and um the caller or the write-in person mm -hmm had a person that had wrote into the show uh her question was why did they spend the whole religious day fussing about quad or why did she let her family talk about quad so badly and of course you know they played the footage you know and they had receipts and they just kept showing mariah's family talking real nasty about quad calling her garden tools and everything under the sun of the god of god itself for 
being a, a child of God and saying nice things. And, of course, Mariah was deflecting. Aiden was kind of helping her out, saying, no, nah, that was just a religious holiday. We only do this, that, and the third. And we teach our kids about Christmas. We te- teach them about the Muslim faith around the holidays. And, you know, just incorporating all of it in for their edification so they can keep up the tradition since they are a part of two different religions. Uh, so, uh, you know... <sighs> Mariah was just constantly saying, no, 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 no. Her family did not um, do that to quad. And the footage showed, you know, the viewers such as us, <laughs> something quite contrary to what uh, Mariah was putting out. Like, no, your family did. They showed the footage. And she was saying, no, 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 no. That footage is wrong. But, you know, they only showed one snippet of it. But it was like a three-hour dinner. They didn't catch that. They didn't want to put anything. It was just to drive ratings. So, y'all just showed what y'all wanted to show of the dinner and stuff like that. But Mariah felt in her whole hearts of hearts, even though it was receipts out there showing the footage, that her family was dog and quad out and she really wasn't saying anything to tell them to stop let's just talk about the religion what we're here for let's just love on each other let's not talk about any subjects that are going to get us in a bad space or a negative space and you know this that and third it was with the world child it's just it with the world and Andy was sitting up there looking at her like she was stupid like you going to argue against footage <laughs> <laughs> that is telling you something different than what you're trying to tell us well we just gonna go and leave it at that because we know we're right and you're wrong and we have footage to support that but anyway we'll leave on from that situation we got Contessa and Scott they having uh, scenes being played back from them from the whole season about this whole big deal about her leaving Atlanta and wanting to go to Tennessee I think it was to a school down there where she wanted to get her extra schooling and her extra degree under her belt and um Cecil and uh, not Cecil but uh Eugene and Toya was having a discussion and Toya brought it out saying you know my husband we were talking about you know you could have really went to school here and she was like no 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 the program that she wanted the pieces the components that they had they didn't offer that in Georgia they only offered it in Tennessee I think it's Tennessee. It might be Tennessee or Alabama. I'm not really sure. It's another really here nor there. Just a school out of town. We do know that. But um, she was saying, uh, no, 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 no. And then a caller had wrote in because they had watched her throughout the time she's been on Merit Medicine, meaning Contessa. Uh, they wrote in and said, well, you know, uh, back in the day, you work for two years or you took two years off because you wanted to stay with the kids but you were a full-fledged full-time doctor at that time then you told your husband you didn't want to work full-time no more you want to be with the kids this is their formative years that it did out of that so he said okay work part-time then she was that wasn't satisfying her so she wanted to go back to school she did what she wanted to do she enrolled herself in the out-of-town school scott got all frustrated about it we saw it all play out on this season and he pretty much uh, really was pulling the kids in to pretty much uh, have them feel like he was feeling like she had abandoned them, meaning Contessa, and left him to do all these motherly type things that she is supposed to do. And he's just supposed to be out there making the money and, and coming home and sitting in all his glory and, I don't know, making some types of uh judgment provider calls but pretty much take care of the kids make sure they're good and have his supper ready (laughs) type of mentality but scott knew his faults were where they were um eugene was all on point for scott he was team scott he was saying well hey you know contestant don't get on him how he raised those children how he provides for those children while you're away because you were wrong getting on him trying to say that he wasn't taking care of the kids properly when that wasn't true he was still providing food shelter and clothing for them kids they probably didn't look the best they probably wasn't dressed the best they probably hair wasn't the best for us the girls but it was what it was you left us you said you want to do that i supported you and of course i'm not going to do everything perfect like mom but i'm going to make sure you never go without food shelter and clothing while she's not here with us okay and that's just how it's going to be but could tell someone wanted him to strictly follow a regiment or what she would do 
knew how she was doing. So she was being critical towards him when it didn't have no basis. Just like he was being critical towards her by using the kids and playing on his feelings through them where they pretty much had the same feelings. And it was unfair for him to do have done that through the kids to get back at Contessa. <laughs> so... Everybody had really felt that both of them were wrong, but, you know, they could have worked it out. It wasn't nothing to be trying to break up a whole marriage for. It's just they needed to communicate more and be more in tune of each other's feelings. And not mentioning uh, taking the kids' feelings into account, too, when they go and do these things. As far as, you know, getting secondary, thirdary education is going to take them away from the family and you know other little things you know let's think about the kids and in, in totality of our family for our, before we do things that is going to uh disrupt the family household in some way okay so that was a cute scene everything seems to be okay with that situation we'll see when it comes to them getting another season how that's going to fare uh, they've all agreed, meaning the women, that it is a double standard. Women has have to do it all. They have to be the provider. They have to be the nurturer. They have to be the uh, communicator. Uh, they have to be the homemaker. You know, it's just everything. The cook, the maid, uh, the grocery shopping person, the assistant. And then go out there and try to have a professional career. Which, that could be daunting on anybody. Let's let's be real about that. So, uh, they all agreed about that. Like I said, Eugene took up for Dr. Scott. Contessa did inform us that she would be finished with school in the summer of this year. And they were excited about that. But, you know, like I said, Contessa ideas and her dreams are just too far out there and not attainable while she's trying to be a mother as well she talking about she want to be the surgeon general or the secretary of the uh united states army uh organization i'm like good god girl you trying to make like you you a man or something and you have all these other um responsibilities as a wife as well as a, a mother to your three kids how you gonna do this you know what i'm saying again the double old standard that works against women but you know sometimes these different positions that she's trying to hold you can't have no family you can't have no kids no husband no nothing okay because you're trying to lead the world you're trying to have the whole world in your hands and you have to make sure you you um sell with that baby uh full course full steam and and steady when you got kids and and they just so you can't anticipate anything with them it's just like on a daily basis they can get hurt at school they can fall off a trampoline they can break something then everything you know they want their mama they don't want their dad they want their mama then what you gonna do child i don't know i don't know couldn't tell so you, you're doing too much it's almost like you're trying to live a single life here but then have a family in the background I, I i don't get it but anyway we move on from that situation they're bringing up the cabo trip okay the cabo trip we know we had a lot uh on there especially we just gonna go talk about the scene about you remember when toya had her little sipping paint party and the naked men were running everywhere well cesar had a little playback it wasn't as best as the women had got down but it was uh damn near close okay but they had a little strip party that they went to a little strip club and they got the same little stuff going on but dr damien was at the brunt of the whole joke or the whole scene and it wasn't fitting for his wife dr heavily because she sure was clowning up there something and we all saw it they did playbacks on it and sister just said you know he was just upset because the women he felt did go a little bit too far they had naked men from in their birthday suits from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet women they go see at the strip club you know they don't necessarily be out of their bikini type wear they they have like sl swimwear very nakedness swimwear but they kind of be covered but you still don't lose no imagination you can definitely see what you need to see uh, but yeah that was just a big playback for them and you know all the women were very fine with it, it was just Dr. Hevelin that was having her bad taste in her mouth and she was making everybody uncomfortable with the situation especially her husband Damien but Damien was surprised that he found out some of the information that Dr. Hevelin had left out he found out on camera he was like he don't like those kind of surprises he, he don't appreciate them he don't like them so I'm sure him and Dr. Hevelin had a nice conversation riding home after that tape and Okay, um, and you know, of course, Dr. Andy, Dr. Andy, Andy was 
talking to Dr. Heavenly about, you know, was it really a big problem of, you know, the stripper pretty much paying more attention to her husband and the rest of them. And, of course, you know, Dr. Heavenly just spoke her mind. Look, I don't like women around my husband. I don't like women addressing my husband uh which is a little bit too much that kind of borderline obsessive compulsive like damien can speak you know especially if a person if a female is talking to you both and she has a legit little a legitimate uh, a legitimate question that she's wanting to ask that maybe only a male can answer even though you're with uh him dr heavenly i mean come on slow your roll you you're very insecure in that situation i mean what if damien saw a woman uh on the side of the street uh and it's rain or maybe it's just cold outside hell it may be hot as hell you want damien to just not stop and help a female in trouble what you gonna do say i can call triple a for it but we're gonna keep on pressing on i mean come on dr help that's just piss poor in your book and total insecure because i'm sure damien is not gonna you know uh fraternize with the enemy as you seem to say women are when they definitely overstep their boundaries and talk to your man whether you're there or whether you're not there um don't understand that mentality and i'm just gonna go on past it but it just is what it is uh but um Damon was okay. He just said he don't watch the show. He don't watch the tape. It's because I guess he don't want to get his feelings hurt. Because he know his wife out there doing stuff. That she ain't got no business. But she want to hold him to a certain standard. But I'm sure like I said. They had a definitely conversation as they rode home. Um, as Dr. Heaven still feel firms that women can cheat much better than men. She always feel that women stay three steps ahead. Three steps ahead of men. While men don't even think that way. Now I'm like child please men get caught sometimes because they want to get caught hint hint curtis curtis he wanted to get caught uh but men can be just as devilish and they can definitely be sneaking around fooling around and you'll never know what happened okay so no i don't give men the whole spiel that they're dumb no they're not they don't took a playbook from the women's playbook and learn how to not get caught okay they learn how to play the game where they have become better players than we are uh at times okay but it just is what it is dr helen can have her say but uh i think she's not right in that situation at all um Oh, and then, like I said, Dr. Damon had told uh, um, Andy that he don't like finding stuff out uh, at the wrong time. Or definitely not showing it on TV. And he's finding out stuff that his wife should have definitely been telling him. He seemed like he was very disturbed. Okay, and then the fifth scene has got me recapping all the joys and pains the women had went through this season. Of course, Contessa, when it comes to her school and her husband not understanding. Then we had, um, what's her name? Um, shoot Toya telling us about uh, her situation with her lost baby her miscarriage and stuff and just a lot of things going on and of course Dr. Simone fighting with Dr. Heavlin because her friendship has been tainted or daunted uh, by Heavlin spending so much time with her friend Jackie and, and all this other kind of stuff uh, and it brings out that Toya uh, switched from Dr. Jackie's services to Dr. Simone OBGYN services. And really he didn't get what he was searching for. Because Toya even spun it off on saying something about Jackie be wanting her money up front. Uh, they already know the insurance is going to pay something. But they want you to put a deposit down just in case the insurance don't come through in a timely manner. I said what kind of uh, office Dr. Jackie got going over there? She is a definitely a strong businesswoman. If she you can't be seen on no certain terms without her getting her cut first. Ooh, child. But anyway, I, I guess that's how you have to be. I guess that's why she's been in business and continue to make money. I don't know. But evidently, Dr. Simone is like, okay, no, we'll sell whatever you say you have to pay. And then we're going to build your insurances. And then we're going to expect payment after that, like most doctor's offices do. But like I said, I, I don't know if that was the reason why Toya had switched um, providers from Dr. Jacket to Dr. Simone. I can kind of see why uh, Dr. Simone is pretty much laid back. She's not as strict um, 
and not as focused as uh and probably lack lack bedside manner and then again you know if y'all are beefing on the show hell i don't know if i want anybody to uh be coming up my snatch for any other reason uh because they might hurt some up there you know i'm not saying they would do it Oh, yes, I am saying they may do it intentionally, and then I would hate to think that and that they would be so uh, mad at me for whatever reason I may have said on the show, and they would take it out on my body and physically hurt me, you know, because in the Hippocratic, uh, what call it, Hippocratic Oath, other physician or anybody working in the uh, human service field, you do take that oath to do no harm uh, to anybody you serve, so... I don't know. It's just kind of weird with that situation. And then, like I said, Toya didn't really give a good explanation of why she had switched providers. So we moved on from there. Um, Toya even uh, was fussing with Dr. Heavenly because Dr. Heavenly was they, oh, somehow they were talking about uh, little young ladies uh, at the age of uh, 14 getting on birth control. And uh, Dr. Heavenly said, no, nah, I don't like that. No, nah, I would probably let Simone see my daughter, but not in a 14. And she was trying to tell Simone about it. Simone was like, you know, girls do start that at that age. And then Toya going to bust out and say, yeah, I got on birth control when I was 14. Uh and then that was just playing right on into Dr. Heavenly Hands to just uh, make a fool out of Toy and say, yeah, and Toy, look at you now. <laughs> so I was like, Toy, bad move, bad move. But Toy was okay. She was there for it. And she took it like a champ. Uh, then we got, um, let me see, Dr. Contessa, she tried to uh set quad up she told andy with a plastic surgeon and of course uh quad was not hearing none of that i i would be scared too to tell you the truth yes lord uh trying to set me up with somebody i think not Mm-mm, no ma'am <laughs> after dr evelyn did what she had to do and they were saying that the man she was trying to set her up with was like four feet so i'm like oh my goodness but you know they were joking uh dr consulsa said no the man was just as tall as you and he's a plastic surgeon meaning ka-ching 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 and then and it was like well quad is it some reason why you don't want to date doctors is that what it is you don't want to be bothered with a physician no more and she was like eh, nah, you know and i'm like quad already gave her a list of what she wants in a man and uh it just is what it is quad will find someone i'm sure don't don't count her out in that aspect then we got um let me see pretty much ann was ready to go quad had called herself taking a little break wasn't back on set when it was time to film and he was getting all he said he he needed to get home tucking his child and this then the third i'm like andy slow your roll baby slow your roll okay it's gonna be okay or you should have just brought him to the studio with you and had a little bed set up and he would have been right there when you finished taping but he it seemed like andy was just too fit to be tired he was tired of the whole show um, he knew this was really lackluster himself and he just ready to get the, you know, the, uh, taping done with. So at the end, they started talking about, um, what did they want out of their relationships coming up next season? So he kind of alluded to, they're going to get another season and they all are going to be invited back, but he did not say anything or question Dr. Heavenly because Dr. Heavenly had made him mad, uh, through season. I mean, through the whole season, through doing the part reunions one, two and three. Okay. So he didn't even ask, uh, Dr. Heavenly what she thought. Oh, I missed it. But I know quad. He asked, what she was going to do. She said she was going to be open to relationships with the group. I'm like, yeah, right. Mariah said, you know, she has no ill feelings towards any, any one of them. She said she's open and she's forgiven. And I'm like, right. Then they asked Simone. Simone said she loved the group. I'm like, yeah, right. Okay. Then you got Contessa. She's saying she wants to learn from the other women about how she can keep her marriage on point. I'm like, girl keep living life and keep looking and praying that's what you need to do all right uh then we had dr jackie saying recognizing the growth in the group and everything doesn't stay the same people change overnight like she said new levels new devils uh i mean they just have to keep rocking with one another in the group um toya 
is not going to he and asked her was she going to build a, a, a three-story closet she said no the one that the two-story i have is fine it's perfect for me and it was more so making digs that uh andy was being messed between dr heavily and, and simone because um dr Heavenly had already had her closet situation straightened out at a two level. Then Toya got hers done, and it looks much, much nicer than what uh, Dr. Heavenly had did to hers. But, of course, Dr. Heavenly had been in her house for a while, some years, and Toya's just getting hers, and she's getting everything updated, up-to-date state of the art and whatnot. So, um, Dr. Heavenly called herself done renovated, and now she has a three-story closet. <laughs> So I'm like, child, they, I mean, Dr. Heaven trying to compete with Toya. It's just hilarious. Okay. But, and that was really it of the whole third set of the reunion, if you can believe it or not. And I did it in 24 minutes. I'm proud of myself. Okay. But that's all I had for this particular uh, last showing of season what season was this? Season 7, episode 18. So we'll be going in season 8 uh, fairly soon. I guess they're going to break for about maybe two months. And then they're going to be taping. And then we'll start being seen what's going on with them once again. Okay. Hopefully we'll see more Buffy, less of Contessa. But, you know, it just is what it is. Then, hell, they might bring another friend of the friend of the show in. Who knows? But that's all I had. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, as always. Share and like my videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.